Thank you. So, um, briefly, um, the goals of this project are twofold. Um, we want to test an alternative explanation for some of our recent um, findings of an ideologically a ideological asymmetry and what we're calling um, motivated conspiracy endorsement, which I'll talk about uh, in a minute. And then provide an experimental test for um, one explanation for that ideological asymmetry, um, which um, has affectionately been called the conspiracies are for losers um, hypothesis um, at the individual level. And I'll elaborate. Okay. So I briefly want to discuss the theory here um, and what we found. Um, talk about the conventional sort of wisdom explanation for our finding and the alternative explanation. Uh, talk about our design um, and the test of the alternative explanation, the findings, and the conclusion. Okay. So we know a lot about the correlates of conspiracy endorsement from the psychology literature. Um, there's a lot of research on um, the psychological, both personality variables like authoritarianism in um, relation to conspiracy endorsement, but also variables like powerlessness, need for control, uncertainty, um, and anxiety. And that conspiracy theories serve a um, uncertainty reducing function because they help people explain confusing events, oddly enough, because oftentimes conspiracy theories are very confusing and detailed, but they, they tend to serve these, these functions. Given the fact that most, many conspiracy theories are political in nature, it's not surprising that we and others uh, also argue that there are political factors that are involved in um, conspiracy endorsement, um, in particular ideology and party identification, um, focusing on motivated reasoning. Um, so the notion here is that conservatives and Republicans are more likely to endorse conspiracy theories that make liberals and Democrats look bad. And, and vice versa. That's what we're calling motivated conspiracy endorsement, um, that you're making the other side um, look bad. Okay. So um, two hits from our, our previous findings in a piece that is uh, going to be eventually in print in HAPS, but is online, um, in the online first, um, first view. So obviously, we find that conservatives are more likely to endorse conspiracy theories that impugn liberals, and vice versa. Okay? Um, we wouldn't be, I would be standing here if we didn't get that basic, uh, basic effect. <laughs> um, but we also found an asymmetry that conservative, the short story is conservatives do this more to a greater degree okay? um, than liberals do. And in the, in the, there's also, we have some complicated three-way interactions in that paper with knowledge and trust, which I'm going to save you from hearing about today. Uh, but this finding of an asymmetry um, is the one that we want to dig deeper into. And we, we, we talked about some explanations, potential explanations for it um, in that paper. Oh, incidentally, this was a, the, we found these, these results were from an MTurk survey that we also replicated with the 2012 ANEX, which you can't see on the fence line. Okay, so two main explanations or possible explanations for this asymmetry. The conventional explanation would be the psychological differences. Right? The conservatives are different from liberals, and, and you talked about the ways in which they are different from liberals, in ways that would make them more prone to this type of motivated conspiracy endorsement. Okay? An alternative explanation is the losers hypothesis, not in a pejorative sense, but in a political sense. That conspiracy theories are for political losers. Joe Yusinski and Joe Parent in their 2014 book um, did content analysis of New York Times letters of the editor going back to 1890, from 1890 to 2010. And one of their findings is that during Republican presidential administrations, uh, the villains of conspiracy theories that are talked about in those letters are Republicans, and vice versa. Okay? Their explanation for that finding is that the people who are writing the letters are on the other side. Right? They're the political losers who are using conspiracy theories in part maybe to scapegoat. We lost not because we're wrong, but because the other side cheated. Um, as in a way also to um, ex explain away the uncertainty and the powerlessness and reduce the anxiety. Okay. Um, so what we're going to do here is to test this um, loser's um, hypothesis okay, um, at the individual level. So first, we expect to replicate the asymmetry that we, we've seen already. Okay. And we're also going to look at, we're going to look at ideology and partisanship. And then the loser status hypothesis, that um, um, perceptions of um, feeling like a political loser will moderate um, the motivated conspiracy endorsement. And here's the key. Okay. The key here is that 
all of the research, recent research on conspiracy theories have been done during an Obama, during the Obama presidential administration in the last eight years, uh, where conservatives on average are more likely to feel like losers. In fact, the Pew um, Center did a survey in September and asked this question. 79% of Republicans say that they're on the losing side of politics these days. 52% of Democrats say they are as well. Uh, but so both over 50%, but the um, conservatives are much higher than that. Um, so what we're going to do here is we're going to try to manipulate loser status and try to get liberals to feel like losers, liberals, Democrats to feel like um, losers, and see if we can get reduce the ideological asymmetry. Okay, okay so um, we're using an MTurk sample here. We're focusing on um, conservatives and liberals and Democrats and Republicans, and you see the ends here. Like every MTurk sample, it's um, more heavily Democrat uh, liberal. Um, and we've got this experimental manipulation of loser status. Okay. We measure loser status as a manipulation check, ideology, party ID. We have 28 conspiracy theories in this study, and there's some fascinating stuff in there to dig through. We're going to focus on seven conservative ones and six liberal um, ones. And again, by, when I call them conservative and liberal, I mean ones that conservatives are more, more likely to endorse are the conservative ones, and the same thing with the liberal. And we're controlling for authoritarianism, religiosity, and standard demographics. Okay. Here's our conservative index. Um, here are the seven um, conservative conspiracy theories. Um, the alpha on this index is um, 0.77. It's a four point scale going from definitely not true to definitely true, definitely not true, probably not true, probably true, definitely true. Recode from zero to one, average them together. Okay. And here's our liberal index. The bottom one that you can't see is that the Bush administration faked unemployment statistics in 2007 to make Republicans look good, to decrease the um, perceptions of the economic uh, crisis. Okay, so I'm not gonna spend too much time talking about the experimental manipulation because it didn't work. <laughs> well, okay, remember 79% of Republicans already feel like losers. We couldn't get them to feel any more like losers. I just like saying, it's a fun paper to talk about because I keep saying the word losers all the time. <laughs> and um, liberals, we were able to move, um, and we actually were able to move Republicans and conservatives a little bit, but not enough for that for that manipulation to have have an effect. Um, and I'm happy to talk about what we did in the Q and A um, on the uh, manipulation itself. We basically made use of the Pew press release of their study on the survey, and we changed the numbers. Um, to make people think that more Democrats think that they're losers and, and vice versa. So our um, ideological asymmetry results, we get the same thing that we've gotten in the past. Um, conservatives, since ideology is coded, um, it's a dummy variable, so this is um, conservatives and Republicans, um, that we get a positive coefficient on the conservative index and negative coefficient on the liberal index, and the same thing for party ID, and these two are statistically significantly the, conservative, the ideology and the party for the conservative index are, are bigger, statistically significantly bigger. So we get the same ideology and party asymmetry that we've gotten in the past. Um, so we have this manipulation check question. This is the question um, adapted from the Pew question, thinking about the way things are going in politics today. On the issues that matter to you, would you say your side has been winning more often than it's been losing, or losing more often than it's been winning? I'll just show you the results of the manipulation check, um, where we've got, we told some people, some people read the, uh, an article that said the Democrats, more Democrats think that they're losing. On um, the control condition, read no um, article, and the Republicans are losing. Um, and you can see the red bar as we go from Democrats losing control to Republicans losing, and we get the reverse on liberals. Um, and then the same thing for Republicans and Democrats, if we use party as our variable. There's a significant effect here, these chi-squares, except for the conservative one. The chi-squares are significant, but we're not moving enough people, okay? and a big enough um, people. But we can make use of this manipulation check question. We lose the experiment, but we, we can now look at whether people who perceive themselves to be losers are more likely to endorse conspiracy theories. Okay? So first, does the manipulation moderate? No. Does the measure moderate? And the answer is yes. And I'll show you some pictures here in a minute. 
Um, but when we look at this loser perception, which is just a dummy variable, loser coded as one, you feel like a loser, um, by ideology on the liberal index, uh, we get the effect, the conservative index, um, and also on party ID, um, we see it for the liberal index. I'll show you what these look like. Okay. So um, here you have um, Democrats are the dark bar, Republicans are the light bar. And what, we're, what I'm modeling here is loser perceptions. Okay. What you see here is that for liberals, well, for on the liberal index, liberals are more likely to endorse these when they feel like losers. And Republicans are more likely to endorse theirs when they feel like losers. Okay. Um, I can show you this in a different way because I don't want to make one more point here. Um, this flips the, the codings of those around. This is the same um, interaction modeled looking at winners versus losers. Okay. Bigger effect for losers than winners on the liberal index. Again, the negative direction because of how we're coding ideology. Um, and the same thing, um, oh, this is party ID, sorry. Um, the same thing for uh, on the conservative index, with again Republicans being more likely to endorse conspiracy theories when they feel like losers than when they feel like winners. I wanted to show it to you this way because I want to make one other point. This coefficient for losers on the Republican index or the conservative index is still bigger than this coefficient for, for on the liberal index. So we originally pitted these two hypotheses against one another. Psychological differences or conspiracy theories are for losers. Right? Um, what, we're, what we're showing here is two things. One, we can make liberals look more like conservatives, or Democrats, Republicans. I'm using the words interchangeably here. Sorry, or maybe that's OK. And um, summary, there we go. <laughs> no effect of the experimental ma ma manipulation effect of the measured perceptions in a way that we expected. Um, that's consistent with the conspiracy theories are for losers hypothesis, but also still some evidence for the psychological differences um, as well. Um, we have some next step, steps about um, using other types of manipulations um, and using a scale to measure loser status instead of the dichotomous variable, which I think will help us be able to pick up why um, we still see conservatives and Republicans um, um, who feel like losers endorse or engage in motivated conspiracy theories more because they may feel more like losers. And we can't get that. Um, and it makes sense, I mean, given eight years in Obama administration. Okay, I'm done. <laughs> <All right. laughs>